Hello and welcome back to our Bannerlord modded playthrough and we're going to be participating in our first siege right here. Obviously this is not a very challenging one but it is a siege that where we can die nevertheless so there is still just as much threat upon our very lives as they would be with pretty much any other one. However, I've just noticed that there is a vassal that has perished in a battle against manhunters and that's actually kind of amazing. I feel like the amount of realism that is added as a result of having this mod installed is actually unparalleled because if you think about real world situations, are you really going to expect criminals or, you know, people that live outside the law, whether that be, you know, bandits or, you know, murderers or whatever you want to, you know, call them or whatever, then are you really going to expect them to be honorable and merciful towards these random lords that have had extremely, well, privileged lives? And, uh, you know, you're really going to expect them not to get killed on the fields of battle? No, because that's not how it goes, you know? That is just not realistic. It's not realistic to assume that these guys are going to have... Um, you know, sensible action, because let's face it, if the manhunters in question had decided to instead take the vassal prisoner and then ransomed them, then that would have made them a lot of money. However, the, the act of ransoming in the first place, that's also a very, very difficult subject to broach. Because just think about this, what about if they have like only 15, 20 men in their party of manhunters and what are they supposed to do are they supposed to go to the the faction that they've captured this vassal from and be like hey um you, you know you over there that guy with 150 very strong and highly trained units do you want to <laughs> do you want to take your guy back do you want to give me some money in exchange for that yeah that's the kind of thing i'm talking about it's very very risky for them to do something like that so it might just make more sense for these bandits just to kill off whoever they have and just move forward with whatever they had on their backs because let's face it the vassal probably has some extremely wealthy looking armor probably a very uh, very well kept horse great weapons and so on and so forth and you're going to be able to take those and sell them for a pretty decent amount anyway and then you won't have to deal with the danger of having to ransom and you're generally going to have a much easier and more straightforward time. So the logic behind it is actually sound in that case. Uh, obviously executing dependent on if that is an enemy vassal party on the other hand, then that's obviously a little bit different because there are some rules in warfare some of the time, of course. Some of the time, not all the time. But I, I found that quite interesting to see that that guy actually did perish at the hands of a couple of manhunters because you think to yourself well manhunters these guys were actually able to eliminate a, a an, an actual vassal party it doesn't make sense right because usually these manhunters wouldn't be that powerful at all but in the grand scheme of things if you think about it yeah i think they probably would be able to dependent on where the vassal is dependent on his luck because let's face it maybe he was just defeated in a large-scale battle and he's running around with a very very miniature force and it's going to cost him his life which it very much did and i very much appreciate that kind of realism in the game i, th I think it really adds a huge amount anyway um yeah unfortunately i didn't even get any action here which is somewhat unfortunate because now i just gained an absolutely minuscule amount of morale, and that's pretty much it. I did get a level from this for some reason. I have no idea how I gained a level, but okay. I think. Wait a minute! Don't give this to me, please. Oh no! There's a uh, there's a vote going through for this, isn't there? Oh dear. Okay, yeah. Now this is this is possibly a bad bad idea. Uh, I have 24 influence. That's not going to be enough. They're probably going to want to. Mm. Yes, they probably want to give this to me. I am going to vote for someone else. I'm going to vote for this guy. Uh, 
Yeah, of course they gave it to me, didn't they? I knew, I knew they would do that. Yep, I knew they would do that. That is actually the worst possible thing that they could have done. Ah. Ah, I do have improved garrison. Okay, whew. Okay, that actually makes things a little bit, a little bit easier for me. Because I was thinking to myself, okay, we're probably going to have some big, big issues here. Now, you can see here that the next version of improved garrisons uh, the, the mod itself has been improved dramatically. Look at these wonderful sliding menus that they have going on here. I very much appreciate that. Okay, so let's have a look here. Um, let's recruit from the region. Uh, let's um, let's recruit. Uh, let's recruit 150 troops. Uh, ooh, I have no idea. Recruiter recruitment amount 50. I don't really do. I do I care about the recruit? Yeah, I guess we should, right? Uh, let's re let's create one. Uh, let's get, I don't know, let's get 50, I guess. And we'll just get any culture. I don't really care which culture this guy should have. Uh, we'll just give him a bunch of um, trained archers to run around with. And there we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the training. Improved garrison training. Well, uh, yeah, well, of course, we're going to enable that. Max upgrade tier for troops. Okay, yeah, that is absolutely fine. We can just make three. And I don't really care about the template, to be honest. I think that they can just advance into whatever they want to do. So uh, do I need do I need to do that? I'm actually not sure. Mm, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, uh, guards. Uh, no. uh, ooh, automatically create a guard party to defend villages. That sounds fun. Yes. Okay. Medium. Yes. Okay. Allow to upgrade troops. Yeah, that sounds fun. Return threshold percentage. Yeah, 35%. Allow to replenish. Yes. Allows to recruit prisoners and allow to buy horses. Yeah, why not? All right, there we go. Okay, so there's the current garrison at the moment, which is what I just put in there, obviously. And there you go. Okay, so that is looking pretty nice, I guess. I actually have no idea, but yeah, I, I hope that that's going to go well. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. And is there anything that I can do here? Maybe I can do a couple of, uh, couple of improvements. So I'm thinking we're probably going to do something like, well, probably this. Uh, let's get a little bit of gold to add to this as well, because I do want to add construction. Ah, yes, unfortunately, the security is not looking very good at the moment, so that's obviously going to be a bit problematic for us, but I think we can pretty much just wait here for some time, and then the security is going to be increased, and hopefully that's going to work out quite well. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Oh, that's a very large army right there. Okay, I'm a bit worried about that. Thankfully, we are getting some more garrison recruits coming in. And I am very worried right now that that massive army is going to come back and is going to attempt to do some pretty uh, unsavory things to our castle. But if they do decide to do that, then they are um, hopefully not going to have too, many, uh, too much success because we might have some people nearby that are going to help us out. And uh, someone actually did confirm that this is indeed war exhaustion at the top of the screen here so that's very very nice to know because that basically means that I can uh, pretty much predict when the uh, when the war might be over which is going to be quite nice. Mirko's army is also fighting something else I have no idea what they're fighting at this point I'm basically just going to run around random areas here and I'm just going to try and uh, recruit as many troops as possible even if they are troops from the opponent or troops from a potential future opponent I think it makes a lot of sense to do that because we just really need the numbers at this point and just being able to have the numbers and level up some units in the meantime as well would probably make a, a good deal of sense Ooh, yeah it's very very difficult to get people apparently <laughs> uh, that is not not great not great at all Ooh, I could sell desert horses for a decent amount here but I don't really want to slow myself down by such a dramatic margin I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm probably going to end up selling my pole arm eventually. I'm going to sell the pole arm and then I'm going to get another one. I'm probably going to try and make one if I can because at the moment I feel like this just does it it just doesn't do enough. It just doesn't do enough damage in in my experience. You know, most of these 
attacks that we're having right here, they don't really seem to do that much for us, unfortunately. And I would like to be able to use something like a crossbow or something like that instead. I think that is probably going to make more sense. So I'm thinking we'll probably do something like that. Anyway, I'm wondering whether we should purchase some dates here or some grapes. Maybe we can sell some. Let me just take a quick look. Kuyaz is buying grapes for a decent amount. So let's actually buy a bunch. Let's buy like 55, whatever. I don't really mind. Whatever we can do to make a little bit of extra cash here and there, that I'm happy to do that. And we can go across the water, which is an absolutely fantastic feature here. Okay, vote for the owner. Please don't... No, don't, no, no, don't give this to me, guys. Why are you giving this to me? You absolute imbeciles. Ah, oh, I have no idea why they're giving that to me. Okay, well, sure. If they want to do that, then they, they can definitely do that. I am... They're, they're sabotaging me, you know that, right? They're sabotaging me, because the reason why they do that is so that then the other vassals will have more of an opportunity to gain fiefs going forward because if they prove to the liege that I'm not actually that you know trustworthy or dependable then they're actually going to gain more fiefs themselves the other vassals that is so yeah that's actually kind of worrying anyway let's sell the grapes that's a pretty decent amount of profit right there and I think we're probably going to enter the tournament. Oh, no. Actually, you know what? They might give me that pole arm. So I'm probably not, as I said, I'm probably not going to do uh, too many more tournaments around here, at least. But I would probably like to do a tournament or two later down the line once we go into separate areas. And we'll see what we can do with that. Oh, it seems like my... Um, Yep, my castle is under siege. I can't do anything about that. These uh, these fellows are going to be way too strong for me to do anything against. So it is going to be a case of me turning up there and then being like, oh, well, they have over a thousand units. What can I do against that? Probably nothing. But I'm going to go over there and see exactly if there is something I can do. Maybe there's a battle going on or something. Oh, you, you, I, are you, are you joking? I, is he serious? Okay, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here, you absolute scoundrel. He was trying it on, wasn't he? He was absolutely trying it on. That is crazy. Okay. Well, I'm pretty happy that we were able to um, <laughs> chase him off, I guess. Anyway, we've got 200 trade skill right now, so I should probably spend my perk point in something. So let's have a look. Hmm. Your town's bound villages, grain, olives, fish, and date production is increased by 20%. And you also have a 20% decrease in sell price penalty for food trade goods. And then otherwise you have... Mm, yeah, I'm probably going to go for the granary accountant, in my opinion. That's probably going to be better. Hardwood, grapes. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be better. It's more likely that I'm going to be selling and buying food than it is um than it is that i'm going to be getting pottery tools cotton and jewelry so i'm going to go for the granary accountant one and we now also have an attribute point to spend too so i'm actually wondering should i spec into one of these skills right here or should i just continue to level up things like leadership yeah i should probably just continue to level up leadership shouldn't i probably makes sense let's get a little bit more vigor as well there we go okay so should I fight this guy? Do you think I can win? I'm I'm going to say no. I'm I'm going to think no probably. Yeah, as you can see. Hmm. This is this is going to be difficult. This is going to be extremely difficult. I have very little hope that we're going to win this, but if I don't win it, then at least I have a fallback option. I can go to my castle and uh, that will be the first defeat of the series. But, um, well, 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 we'll see what happens. I'm going to use my pole arm in... I'm not going to go auto-delegate, actually. I don't really want to do that. We're just going to do this instead. Okay, so we're just going to do um, following me. We're going to tell these guys to follow me as well. There we go. And we're going to do a little bit of a couch lance here. We're going to do some couch lancing. And I'm going to try and take out the enemy cavalry, if at all possible but I'm not holding out too much hope in regards to that. 
Oh, we took out we took out his horse at least. We took out his horse. Okay, I guess that's kind of a small victory in itself. Uh, so much damage done to my horse as well. That's really really bad. Anytime my horse takes damage, it's really really awful because that slows me down quite a bit. Once it gets to lower HP values, I believe at least that that, that is how it is. Okay, more damage. Nice. I mean, that's the thing. That was extremely fast, in my opinion. I, I was riding very, very fast against this guy, and then all of a sudden, I just do nothing. I just do no damage. I don't even take him off his mount. It kind of makes very little sense to me that we are doing so little in that regard. Okay, well, whatever the case, let's just move these guys ahead. Let's put them into a shield wall formation. Let's put my archers on this hill over here. Let's put them a little bit more into a loose... Oh, they're already in, they're already in loose formation. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. I must have done that beforehand. Look at that. 41 damage. Bet if I take this sword and use this against my opponent, it's probably going to do more than 41. What do you bet? Well, it didn't. Uh, it actually didn't. Oh, 300. What? 340 set. What? Are you serious? I'm just going to charge. I'm just going to charge my units. And we're going to charge my cavalry as well. Wow. Yeah. It makes a huge difference to hit on the head. Let's just say that. So much damage done. Just from... <laughs> riding through the enemy's lines right here that is absolute insanity okay we are having a couple of people running away right now but i'm hopeful that they will still end up charging the enemy's archers there we go okay guys come on we could we can actually win this guys we can actually win this if you would just charge it's actually funny if they did I, did I not tell them to charge? I thought I told them to charge. Really? Okay, there we go. Decent amounts of damage. Oh, are they, are they really still in shield wall? Yeah, they are still in shield wall. Okay, yeah, that's not going to do. They, they need to charge. And it seems to me like they kept their formation. And that has made things very, very difficult. I was not anticipating that one bit. I actually thought that they would not do that. Okay, well, I'm dead. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to be able to do here. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, it's actually looking pretty close. Look at that. We're only within seven kills, eight kills now. If we could just achieve... What, what is that guy doing? I have no idea what he's doing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's actually all she wrote. That is pretty much it. I am going to get taken prisoner here. I mean, their cavalry was hounding us throughout the entirety of this battle. That was the main problem. Nathanos is actually still alive, amazingly enough, I believe. So, yeah, I really hoped that all of the high-tier units that I actually gave to Nathanos would have given me the advantage... But apparently that was just not the case. And that is indeed it. Uh, actually, is is this cavalry actually going to be able to achieve victory here by himself? No, no, he's already been taken off his mount, as you can see right there. If this guy was able to literally win against the entirety of the enemy's forces, then I would have just applauded him to the end of time. But obviously that is not going to happen as you can quite clearly tell. So we did suffer a defeat here. That is really, really sad, in my opinion. And that's exactly the reason why having formations and stuff like that, especially um, AI mods and combat mods and all that sort of thing, that's why it's a little bit strange sometimes because these things can really make a big difference to how the, how the army reacts to... Uh, okay... Apparently, I'm now going to have this... Okay, 800. Okay, sure, that's fine. But yeah, um, so that's the reason why we had some issues there. Because basically, I had told my guys to charge in, right? I told them to charge in. But you know what they did? They stayed in shield wall formation. And as a result of them staying in that formation, 
they moved at such a slow moving pace that it basically looked as though they were not moving at all and they continued to just stay around there not really doing anything at all thankfully i do have 30 units in here so i will be able to create a very basic army but i'm just going to be staying here for the most part and just hoping that i can uh, get my get my hp back to a decent enough level and then what we'll do is i will be recruiting a bunch of people off screen and i'll try to level up my own units and it seems like we're going to be making peace with batania which is actually fantastic because we are going to be receiving 650 tribute. I like it. Thank you. Oh yes, that means I'm going to be getting some uh, some additional cash. So that's pretty good. And uh, that means that I don't have to really worry so much about um, potentially getting murdered in this area either. So I'm I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, the uh, hmm, yes. The villages are very, very sparse indeed, but uh, yeah. So my plan is that I will literally just run around in our own territory right here, and I will try to recruit as many units as possible, then I'll level them up on random bandits in the area and all the tasks and all that stuff, and then we'll see if we can maybe get Nathanos back as well. Thankfully, neither myself or Nathanos were eliminated, but he is actually still a prisoner, so that is obviously a big problem. Velu Velu card? Where where ah oh, there it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I suppose that is um that's like v uh, Veluka from uh from from Warband. So that's actually kind of interesting, in my opinion. Anyway, uh Mirko is still running around there. Lagata has been taken by these guys. Really? Oh wow. That's actually a pretty significant expansion right there. But anyway, that's gonna be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.